Singapore, a city like no other, foreign yet familiar, eastern yet western. My first impression of Singapore eight visits ago was that it was a beautiful, pristine, if slightly sterile city. But once I dug deeper, visit by visit, I discovered a fascinating place that has become one of my absolute favorites. A city of innovation, of commerce, of beauty, of some of the most shockingly delicious food on earth, and a city populated by a diverse and wonderful people. Make no mistake, Singapore is the ultimate melting pot of Southeast Asia. So come along as I show you where to go, what to do, and of course, what to eat in the Lion City. I am so sweaty right now. Tip number one, how to get around. This one's actually pretty simple. When you land in Singapore, you'll be flying into the massive, impressive Changi Airport. From here, there are a number of different ways to get into the city. The first is the most expensive, but by far the easiest, just hop in a cab. This is usually my preferred method after a 17 hour flight because, well, I'm lazy. And actually, the taxis here really aren't that bad. A cab from the airport to the city center will cost you about $20 US. The second method is much cheaper and also very convenient, the MRT. Just head to Terminal 2, follow the signs to the train, hop on the east-west line and transfer to where you need to depending on where you're headed. I also recommend getting an Easy Link, which gives you unlimited rides on trains and buses for one, two, and three day periods. Once in the city center, you can hop in cabs, use the MRT, or use the app Grab. It's basically Singapore's rideshare app, but generally cheaper than Uber. And central Singapore is actually very walkable. Just be prepared to sweat a lot. It's hot here and humid. Very hot and very humid. It's probably best to just expect to be in a permanent state of drippiness from your sides to your back to your front. Tip number two, where to stay. Here's where things get a little interesting. Singapore is not cheap, unless you're talking about the local cuisine, but we'll get to that in a moment. In fact, I'm just gonna say it, it is downright spendy. Luxury five-star hotels like the incredibly beautiful, but at least in my case, prohibitively expensive Marina Bay Sands will cost you anywhere from 300 to 700 a night. But don't fret, there are a lot of great budget hotel options out there. It may take some scouring on the typical aggregate sites, but don't worry, you'll find something eventually. I think I spent about 75 bucks a night for my hotel in Chinatown. And of course, there's always the hostel route. Whenever I stay in a hostel, I stay at Berry Best in Chinatown. Tip number three, where to eat. For those of you who know me, you know that I travel the world on my stomach and Singapore is easily one of the two or three greatest food cities in the world. This town is all about the food. A melting pot of Chinese, Indian, Malay, Thai, Middle Eastern, Indonesian, Singapore is truly the culinary apex of Southeast Asia. And the city-state is home to one of the greatest inventions since birth control, the Hawker Center. The Hawker Centers are basically Singapore's way of maintaining its rich street food culture by bringing it inside so they could properly control the safety and food of the water. These are open-air food courts with hundreds of stalls, each specializing in a few different dishes. Each stall is individually owned, each chef a master of a few dishes, serving up world-class food, usually at around three to five dollars a plate. And the first dish I'm going to be showing you is so amazing, it really should be a tip in and of itself. Actually, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna make it one. Tip number four, eat chicken rice. For my first lunch, yes, there's always more than one, I go to the Maxwell Hawker Center down the street from my hotel in Chinatown. There, in a stand in the middle of the center, they serve up the dish that I dream about when I'm away from Asia, the ubiquitous Singaporean Hainanese chicken rice. Juicy steamed chicken served on a bed of white rice that's been cooked in the chicken broth. A few garnishes of sweet soy, fresh ginger, and chili sauce, and that's it. It's a dish so simple you'd think it couldn't possibly be that special, but its simplicity is so beautiful, its flavor's so subtle and perfect it makes me want to write a poem, and I hate poetry. Probably the most popular stall is Chen Chen Chicken Rice, made famous by the great Anthony Bourdain. But it's not the best in the city. But as fate would have it, the best chicken rice is literally three stalls down. Opened by the former chef at Tian Chen, Atai is simply better. 
I've eaten them both side by side, and sorry Tony, that's just the way it is. I call him Tony because uh, I hope at some point we'll be friends. Moving along, tip number five. Continuing the food theme, my favorite hawker centers in the city are Maxwell Road Hawker Center, Old Airport Road Food Center, the Chinatown Complex, Tiong Baru, Chomp Chomp Food Center, Lao Pa Sat, and the Eating Street in Chinatown, which I guess isn't really as much of a hawker center as it is a street that you eat on. Now to list all my favorite dishes in all those stalls would take the length of about 742 YouTube videos, but here are a few of my favorites. At Old Airport Road, I adore the char Sue at Roast Paradise, which to be honest, might just be the most perfect plate of food in the entire city. And the Lor Mee, a delicious thick Chinese noodle soup at Jin Mei Zhang Zhang. How'd I do on that pronunciation? My camera guy is telling me not well. At Maxwell Hawker Center, other than the aforementioned, one could say afore beaten into the ground, chicken rice at Ah Thai. I love the creamy hearty congee at Zhen Zhen Porridge, and the char kway tao at Marina South Delicious Food. The Chomp Chomp Hawker Center is the best spot in town for late night eats, particularly the ever popular gravy-licious Hokkien Mee noodles at Ah Hock Fried Hokkien Mee, and the stupidly delectable spicy stingray at Highway Yuan Barbecue. Stingray is good? Who knew? The impressive Chinatown complex is the largest hawker center in Singapore, housing over 260 stalls. But a few of my favorites are the clay pot rice at Lian Hei Benji Clay Pot, the crazy simple but crazy tasty Chi Chong Fung at Jia Ji Mei Shi, and here you can even try the world's cheapest Michelin star restaurant at Hawker Chan for their succulent soya sauce chicken rice or noodles. Note the queue for this place can be very long and often starts even before they open at 10 a.m. And finally, make sure to get the Change Your World Satay at stall number eight on Lao Passat's Satay Street. The meat here is smoky, savory, and beyond tender, and the peanut sauce is spicy and perfect. Make sure to wash all this down with a totally unique sugarcane juice or a refreshing soursop smoothie. Oh God, that's good. I don't even know what soursop is, but it's really good. Now with so many options, I get that it can be a bit but my best advice is show up hungry, look for a long line, and your stomach will take care of the rest. For me, this is Singapore. The hawker centers are the beating heart of this city, and I will chew on that heart all day, every day that I am there. Tip number six, speaking of culture and melting pots, explore the many varied and fascinating neighborhoods this city has to offer. Let's start, because that's where my hotel is, with Chinatown. This neighborhood is full of incredible food, temples, and the cheapest souvenirs in town. And just the smells wafting out from the restaurants and food stalls alone is enough to keep me coming back here over and over. Make sure to hit up the particularly charming area around Kyong Saik Road, including the cobbled street of Duxton Hill. This whole area has a fantastic village feel, with shuttered windows, tree-lined streets, amazing food, and some of the best nightlife in the city. Another neighborhood I love is Little India. Here the streets are lined with stalls selling crafted flowers, gorgeous art, fresh produce, and the people are vibrant, lively, and full of energy. And as if we hadn't talked about food enough already, Little India is also home to some of the best Indian food you will get in the city not named Mumbai or Delhi. My two favorite spots are the all-vegetarian Kamala Vilas for southern Indian food, specifically dosai, a perfect pancake-like wrap filled with spiced vegetables and potatoes, and Joggy's Northern Indian Cuisine for any damn thing they serve you, especially their made-to-order garlic butter naan. The next neighborhood to check out is the polar opposite of the first two, the Orchard Road Shopping District. I'm not really big on malls, but even I have to be impressed with the shopping in this city. Plus, there's a really great view of the city from the rooftop garden at the top of Orchard Central. Make sure to check out the incredibly cool Arab Street, and don't miss the very funky Haji Lane, a little alley lined with kitschy shops and colorful buildings. It's super charming. Tiang Baru is a fun, more local neighborhood. There are cute little bookshops, busy cafes, the excellent Lou's Hainanese curry rice, a really cool market, and above the market, surprise, surprise, another great hawker center. Finally, take a walk around the bay to get some spectacular views of the city. Look up and marvel at the architecture, the innovation, and the prosperity of this small but impressive country. 
Tip number seven, check out the Marina Bay Sands. So maybe you can't afford to stay there and swim in the incredible infinity pool? Well, neither can I, but they have lots of other cool stuff to do. The view from the Sky Park observation deck is probably the best in the city. There is, of course, a massive mall, if that's your thing, and a casino, if that's your thing. Also Spectra, their free light and water show they put on every night at eight and 9 p.m. makes the one at the Bellagio look like a drinking fountain. And if you don't feel like paying the money to go up on the observation deck, you can get pretty much the same view from Spago at the top of Tower 2. Just tell them you're headed up there for a drink. Or better yet, spend the money you would have spent on the observation deck and actually get a drink. Win-win. Tip number eight, speaking of drinks, don't, I repeat, do not get a Singapore sling because A, it's like 36 bucks and B, it's a complete drink. Nothing says $36 like a maraschino cherry. There, I've made my piece, we can move on. Tip number nine, visit the gardens by the bay. Half gardens, half space age art installation with breathtaking architecture, expansive greenery, cascading waterfalls. Make sure to check out the tree walk through those awesomely weird tree thingies and the mind bogglingly spectacular cloud forest. It may be touristy, but this place will utterly blow you away. Tip number 10, visit the Singapore Botanic Gardens. More gardens, I know, but these are completely different and equally amazing. A sprawling park of endless green, this feels more like a tropical central park. Enjoy the charming gardens, wander the many walking paths, take a jog, though how you can run in that humidity I will never understand, relax in the grass, and take in all the beauty of the truly majestic orchid garden. Tip number 11, do the night safari at the Singapore Zoo. The night safari is one of the coolest zoo experiences I've ever had. You'll see leopards, rhinos, elephants, lions, and much more, all from a tram that winds you through the nighttime jungle park. The whole thing is eerie, mysterious, great for families, and very fun. And I must say, having read about the Singapore Zoo and the wildlife reserves, I love what they do for animal conservation, preservation, and education. It's a great company and a great time. Highly recommend it. Tip number 12, head outside the city to the island of Sentosa and cool off that sticky body of yours in the Strait of Singapore. This small island accessible to the main island of Singapore by bridge or a monorail has some of the best beaches in the city. It's also incredibly touristy, but admittedly great for families. There's a Universal Studios, an outdoor mall, an aquarium, and a water park. If you're looking for a more relaxed stay at the beach, hop on the ferry to St. John's Island and walk across the footbridge to the remote Lazarus Island, a gorgeous, jungle-laden tropical island with arguably the best and certainly most secluded beach in Singapore. Lay back, take in some vitamin D, and refresh yourself in the lovely water. Finally, like I say in many of my videos, just wander and get lost. Every corner of this city-state has something unique to offer. From shopping to temples, architecture to food, this is an always interesting place. It's also one of the safest countries in the world, so walk around all you want, whenever you want. I mean, be smart, but you know, it's safe. And don't listen to people when they talk about how strict the laws are and how it feels like a totalitarian dictatorship. Most of those people haven't even been there. I mean, yes, the laws are strict. So guess what? Don't break them. Don't wanna get a massive fine for spitting gum on the sidewalk? Don't spit gum on the sidewalk. And if you see a sign that tells you not to do something, don't do it. But honestly, whatever you've heard, trust me, this is a surprisingly cool and laid back town. Come check it out. It is absolutely worth the 17 hour flight in coach, in a middle seat, in between two snoring people and a screaming baby. And whatever you do, please, please eat at a hawker center. I've never really been a religious person. When confronted with the concept of heaven, I'll admit I've taken a somewhat incredulous approach. But if there is a heaven, and I'm lucky enough to end up there, I imagine it will look a lot like a hawker center in Singapore. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to smash that subscribe button. Like, really smash it. Really get in there. It won't get me any extra subscribers, but I'll feel better knowing that you gave it the extra effort. Also, I've left a really extensive list of all the places I featured in the video and some I couldn't feature and couldn't fit in in the description below. So if I left anything off the list, please leave your suggestions in the comments below. I Always love to hear what you have to say. Also, I wanna give a huge thanks to the Singapore Board of Tourism for all their help. I'll see you soon from somewhere else in the world.